God. And you really need to prove that God exists and the burden of proof is really all on you. But the problem with that is it's a false dilemma. The Bible makes it very clear. All of creation testifies of God and proves his existence. It shows forth his eternal power and his Godhead. You don't need to try to prove God exists because the existence of God is obvious. The atheists are trying to get you to prove the obvious when you don't need to prove the obvious. It's right there. So the atheist will try to create a false dilemma to tell you there's no proof of God and you really need to try to prove God exists. Well, it's funny. In the same way, uh, Witness Lee and the local churches actually create a false dilemma. And what I mean is this, is they will tell you that if you stress keeping God's word, uh, then you won't have life, but rather you'll, be, you'll have death. The, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life right? Second Corinthians chapter three. So they'll tell you if you stress keeping God's word and following God's word, then you're really on the line of death. But that's a false dilemma, people. It's a false dilemma. I just read you John 12 50, which makes it very clear that actually the commandments of God itself are eternal life. Actually, God's word itself is life eternal. It's life everlasting and keeping his word leads to life everlasting. So this whole charge, this uh, accusation of Witness Lee and his followers, that if you stress keeping God's word, you're on the line of death, it's a false dilemma. The word of God says otherwise. And I'm about to read y'all some verses that are going to prove it so. You know, they consider, the Witness Lee and the local churches will consider, talk of keeping God's commandments as mere good and evil, and it's not eternal life. And they'll tell you, brother, sister, you just need to enjoy the Lord. You just need to enjoy life and get filled up with God's life. And if you really stress keeping God's commandments and obedience to God, and according to them, you're legalistic, you're Old Testament, you're according to the dead letter in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and not according to the spirit, the life-giving spirit. So uh, I wonder what Witness Lee would say to Paul who wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14. He charges Timothy this. He says that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the exhortation of the Apostle Paul to uh, Timothy. To what? to enjoy the Lord and be lost in the enjoyment of God and just experience God and wait for him to do everything for you. No. What did Paul charge Timothy? He charged him to keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable. And that is the commandment to you and everyone, including you local church members. Maybe they need to tell Jesus and the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John, maybe they need to tell them that they were just too legalistic and they just needed to enjoy the Lord when they said things like this. And I read John chapter 14, verse 15. <clears throat> if ye love me, keep my commandments. It doesn't get much simpler and much more straightforward than that, people. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty in the flesh. If you love me, keep my commandments. He doesn't say, if you love me, really enjoy me and, and be wrapped up in the experience of me. No. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 21. Jesus said, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. It doesn't say, he that hath my commandments and enjoys me, loves me. No. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loves me. John chapter 15, verse 10. He says, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. 
even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Jesus didn't say, if you enjoy me and have lots of nice, happy feelings about me, then you'll abide in my love. No. He said, if you keep my commandments, then you'll abide in my love. Does it get any more plain and simple and straightforward than this? What did Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19? He said, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But what? The keeping of the commandments of God. That's what counts. doesn't matter if you're circumcised or uncircumcised. It's not a show of the flesh. What matters in your walk, in your life, is not enjoying the Lord, according to Witness Lee, and being goofy and being frivolous and practicing occult behaviors. No, what matters is the keeping of the commandments of God. 1 Corinthians 7.19 Where is that? Where is that in the local churches? They squelch those kinds of words. They neglect those words of righteousness. And shame on them. Shame on them. Read these verses for yourself. And I'm going to include more of these verses in the description of this video below. I'm going to include all these verses that I just read plus some more that make it very clear that the way that we love God and are faithful to God is by keeping His Word, believing and obeying God's Word, which always has our best interests. Always, just as a, the commandments of the Father have the best interest of His child, in the same way God's commandments have our best interests. They are eternal life. They lead to eternal life. You don't need to take time and be lazy and just sit around trying to have nice, happy feelings before you obey God's commandments. No. David said in the Psalms, my feet hurried to keep your commandments. My feet rushed. They hurried. They made haste to keep your commandments. But you see the opposite in the local churches. And as a result of this Christian hedonism, this hedonistic teaching of Witness Lee, as a result of it, there is rampant passivity in this group, both among the leaders and the laymen, and the laymen, the lay people. Rampant passivity with regards to keeping God's word and obeying his commandments. Surprise, surprise. This passivity is a passive form of rebellion. It is rebellion against God's word just in a passive way, in a lazy way. And they attempt, the local churches, the witnessly followers, they will attempt to cover up their laziness and their passive rebellion. They attempt to cover that up by what I call excuses that are cloaked in spirituality cloaked in spiritual talk. They make excuses like, I don't have the grace for that brother, or I just don't have the leading yet, or uh, I'm waiting on the Lord, or I just need to pray more, or uh, yeah, I just need to take the Lord as my source more. You know, doesn't that sound nice? Those all sound very spiritual, don't they? You know what I'm reminded of? You know, I used to hear that all the time when I was in this group, in the local church's cult. A lot of passivity, spiritual laziness, not doing God's commandments, not keeping his word. And they would make all kinds of excuses cloaked in spirituality. It reminds me of the Pharisees in Mark chapter 7, verses 9 through 13. Read those verses for yourself, four verses. Mark chapter 7, verses 9 through 13. What was going on in that passage of Scripture? What was going on was the Pharisees, the Pharisees were giving to God, giving gifts to God, and they were serving God according to their traditions, yet at the same time, they were breaking God's commandment, specifically the commandment to honor your father and your mother. The Pharisees 
were serving God and doing all kinds of